Well, with the benefit, the biggest benefit for being a site painter is that you can really feel your, the place. And I think, um, I really believe that feeling the energy of a place and feeling its history helps me paint it better with more care and attention to detail mm -hmm. and a certain amount of nostalgia and regret and passion and anger, all these things are in my paintings, you know. I'm pissed off at the economic situation that, you know, our, um, that the American leadership sold us downriver and we no longer have any manufacturing in America. I miss, you know, there's a sense of longing and loss for people that actually made things with their hands and had the knowledge of how to even operate the machines. Yeah. They say that there's new technologies with microchips, but it's not nearly as romantic because you can't um, see how things were made, you know, the whole process. Right. I, I like the, um, I like the, I like having how everything worked showing. Well, I sort of picked this painting because uh, I really like the green. Um, there's a lot to say about green right now, uh, you know. But in a lot of Cindy's other paintings, you can see that there's this industrial scene, and, and this one just seems like more of a respite. You know, it's kind of like an oasis in this desert of decrepitness that she's showing. I don't know. It, it reminds me of very simple formalist paintings too, and. I think there's something still to be said about that. You know, there's a history about that. What do you think? I think it's lively. Because as you can see, uh, Sydney used a lot of dark, you know, colors. And this is one of the paintings that really shows, you know, I don't know, life in general. And I think it's just amazing. If you look closely, I actually think it's, it looks like a Chinese painting, like bamboo strokes. follow the line, see where something got plugged in, see the pulley or the leather belt that turned the wheel that made the other wheel turn. And you could just see how everything orchestrated like a dance or how something would be processed or made. And it um, made you feel like, it, it helped you feel like you belonged in the world because you could see the process and you could see how everything was interrelated and fit together. Mm -hmm. So um, now it's really confusing because we feel detached and, um, you know, you, you don't feel as rooted in the world anymore. Everyone feels sort of like, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're not part of a greater whole, you know. Right. You don't know how you relate, you can't relate to your surroundings anymore, you know. Like, I'm very aware of sitting in this chair. You know, it's leather, it's four inches thick, it's padded, I feel safe. You know, like, I'm very aware of my surroundings. So far, I really like the show. Um, what I've really noticed about it is that her style of painting has really kind of tightened over the years. Uh, previously, she'd been working with a lot of kind of uh, freeform paint and, and really letting the paint really kind of run wild in the actual structure of the paintings. These are much more, these are much tighter than her earlier work. Um, a lot more attention to small detail without losing sight of kind of the larger 
aspect of the page. Well, like I said, I mean, I, I think that a lot of her work, uh, I mean, her, her concept has always been working with, with industrial decline and, and looking at these, you know, these formerly uh, efficient and, and meaningful factories that actually would create products and, and goods and watching the industrial decline and kind of documenting that through paint. Um, she's always worked on a very large scale with lots of different angles, which kind of gives the viewer a certain sense of vertigo when viewing the painting. So all these, all these paintings to me deal with transformation, you know, and they're also, um, they are who I am. I was raised Catholic and they're very Catholic paintings because they always have like a little escape valve to like heaven and then one to the underworld through a valve and there's all these little directions that viewer can take in the paintings. And they're also um, labor intensive, which is like a purgatory view of the world. So there's a lot of, um, you know, you gotta be who you are. So my culture and heritage show in the paintings in this series they do, they can't help but. So, you know, transformation is sort of Catholic view, you know, that's part of it. And then a female view too, right? This hunter gatherer thing, Interesting. you know, like we're women, you know? So, you know, they're not, the, the, you know, it's funny, they're, they're machines, but they're still female paintings because they're, you know, I'm picking up all this detritus and sorting it out and painting it and laying it out for you to see. I painted them to be rebellious because the art world was getting so self-referential and conceptual art had this clean, vacant, shiny, new, excluded look, almost like um, it had to be more like a commodity to be intelligent. Like if it was packaged nicely, it would be more intelligent, therefore more conceptual. So I think it's really kind of, I, I painted them deliberately because I know that plain air painting could never, be considered conceptual. So I deliberately went out and, and painted these and, and claimed that as the, the process of painting on location was performance art. So that's, that, that's my, the, the whole thing. And actually it is because um, every, you know, even falling down is part of it and they have to get these stitches on my chin. You know, it's, it, it, it's all part of the performance of painting these paintings.